Sustainable development has become a popularized expression for Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems. It also elevates nature above man. And it contains something called the precautionary principle, where basically you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. It's based entirely on socialist control mechanisms. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. These objectives include an end to national sovereignty, the abolition of private property, the restructure of the family unit, and increasing limitations and restrictions on mobility and individual opportunity. The green goal includes the listings of what's not sustainable. A couple of the examples include private property. 728 lists fossil fuels. Golf courses and ski lodges are not. Consumerism. Irrigation is not sustainable. Paved roads. Commercial agriculture. Herbicides, pesticides. Elsewhere, it lists farmlands, pastures, grazing of livestock. And the family unit. The focus of sustainable development is the abolition of private property, societal undermining of the family, and abandonment of the constitutional protection of unalienable rights as described in the Declaration of Independence. You see, I sat on the Santa Cruz Agenda 21 committees. Now, this was a lot of crazy ideas. This is back in the mid-90s. Crazy ideas, I heard. Mother Earth's surface wasn't to be scratched. Human beings were to be concentrated into human settlement zones. Educational systems were to focus on the environment as the central organizing principle. All aspects of life were, were covered. Well. I went to these committees at the request of some people who told me that I needed to understand what was going on. And I came back and I said, this is craziness. This is so silly. It has no chance of having any effect on our society. Well, I was wrong. The United States government's support for sustainable development, Agenda 21, is very clear. In 1992, while the Rio conference was going on, George Bush, then president, was there where he executed the Agenda 21 protocols on behalf of the United States and brought it back to Washington, D.C. Within a year, Bill Clinton, by executive order, no congressional review, established the President's Council for Sustainable Development. In Santa Cruz, we've got a two-lane freeway system. We need four. But what we're getting is hundreds of millions of dollars of federal money to take a dilapidated rail line that Southern Pacific wants to put in the hands of somebody else so that a commuter line can be built along the railroad track that will be followed by 14-story buildings where people will live and stack them and pack them units, where developers or so-called sustainable developers will build these high-rises with federal dollars. In fact, Santa Cruz has received a $300 million federal grant to build the first 3,000 of these stack and pack them units. The County Board of Supervisors has said, if you were a sustainable developer, you're immune from any construction defect liability. It's a partnership between selected developers building this new world order and the government using the American taxpayer dollars in order to do it. This is a map of the Wildlands Project. To explain the map, the red are areas that are to be off limits to human beings. No resource development, 
No human activity. If you live there, you will. The yellow areas are the areas for major control of all human activity. If you live there, you will. The black areas, the black dots, are the smart growth zones. That's where human beings are to be stacked and packed in small living units along rail tracks. The smart growth program ultimately has jobs assigned and children cared for by the state. The question has been asked many times how uh, the people who are perpetrating these things expect to do this and make it last. And the answer to that is that you steal a generation of children and you indoctrinate them so that they accept these ideas and they become global citizens in the coming global village. UNESCO came out and declared 2005 to 2015 the decade of education for sustainable development. But they go on to say that it will encompass the 40 chapters of Agenda 21. That is your federal national curriculum. The entire purpose of second grade social studies is to transfer loyalty from the family to the government and teach them about sustainable economic consumption. Students construct their own understandings of reality and realize that objective reality is not knowable. So why bother? The truth is the truth which keep men free is being suppressed in order to prop up the attitude training agenda. And it moves on. This is our new uh, math called Connected Mathematics. Standard 3 tells us that students learn that mathematics is man-made, that it is arbitrary, and good solutions are arrived at by consensus. Most of us assume 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 4. You're wrong. We might reach a new consensus. Uh, how well does it work? Well, they tell you. In the teacher's guide in the back, it tells us that because the curriculum doesn't emphasize arithmetic computations done by hand, some students may not do as well on tests assessing computational skills. We believe such a trade-off in the favor of CMP is very much to the student's advantage in the world of work. Our children are mathematically illiterate on purpose. How do I know on purpose? Why isn't this just a basic bad idea? Because the Sustainable Development Plan tells us so. Generally, more highly educated people who have higher incomes consume more resources than poorly educated people who tend to have lower incomes. In this case, more education increases the threat to sustainability. Charlotte Iserby, I owe you an apology. I did not believe for the longest time it was a deliberate dumbing down. I thought the dumbing down was a natural consequence of a bad idea. Folks, it's deliberate. It's deliberate. The sustainable globalist goal is the orchestration of a planned fall of American principles, values, and lifestyles. The effect on the average American will be devastating. With modernizing technology, the ordinary person will live without independence, privacy, or substantive rights. Another press conference that I attended was uh, the ICLEG group, the International Committee for Local Environmental Initiatives that helps in the implementation of Agenda 21 in all of our local communities. And um, one of the speakers was Harvey Rubin, who happens to be the vice chair of ICLEG. And I asked him about the correlative rights that Americans derive from the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And that, of course, is your individual liberties, your private property, your you know, freedom of speech. I asked him about it clashing with Agenda 21. And you know what his response was? Individual rights must take a back seat to 